Good morning, everyone. This is Pradeep Mal, Ambassador of Change from Getty, the Global Education and Training Institute of Lucknow. We are the premier training institute for teachers and principals uh, in India. And we have international as well as our own national uh, trainers. Uh, we have several in-service and pre-service programs. And for more information on this, please visit getilearn.org, G-E-T-I-L-E-A-R-N.org, or call us on 740-840-1000. You are on our disruptive education platform. On this platform, we have met more than a thousand educators from India and all over the world. And this is all thanks to our mentor, Dr. Sunita Gandhi. And today we have for you uh, Mrs. Uh, Shri Ranjani Prashant. She is the facilitator for the Orton School in Bangalore, Karnataka. She has an experience of more than 10 years. She is an MSc in psychology and another MSc in counseling and psychotherapy. And she's done a BA. She uh, is into counseling, life skills, and communications, training, and teaching. She is interested in classical music and writes poetry in Kannada and English. Welcome, madam. She will be speaking to us on throwing ourselves out of our comfort zone with positivity. Thank you, ma'am, and over to you. Thank you for such a wonderful introduction, sir. Thank you so much. Vidya dhanam sarva dhana pradhanam, which means the knowledge what we gain, what we learn, is the best wealth we can have compared to anything else that can be earned in our lifetime. This is Sri Ranjini Prashant here to present a session on throwing ourselves out of our comfort zone with complete positivity. Before I continue with my session, I want all of you to ponder over a few questions. Uh, you can make a note of this in a paper if you have, or just keep thinking about this in the back of your mind as the session proceeds. How do you feel about yourself off late? Are you challenging yourself or feel very comfortable in your space? Are you a creative person or have you tried to be a creative one? Do you appreciate changes? These are the few questions I want you to keep revisiting as we go forward in our sessions today. Now, what is comfort zone? Comfort zone literally means a type of a mental conditioning that we create for ourselves within our mental boundaries. I have used the word mental here very consciously twice to say that comfort zone is something which we created in our mind and it does not actually exist in reality. The mental conditioning means that we have set a thought process, uh, attitude, or a, a kind of a reaction to a situation which has been conditioned within us may be dependent on our experiences or our uh, relationships with people. But we forget that these mental conditioning can be changed as and when we come up with new challenges in life. But we fail to do it. We create a boundary amongst uh, around ourselves to just sit there and enjoy the comforts within that boundary and we do not allow ourselves to keep a step outside. Now, why should we keep a step outside? Why should we really move out of our comfort zone? Because many a times the magic which we want in our life, the magic with which we can correlate our personality with happens outside our comfort zone. Okay, uh, we comfortable in our space. Okay, I have a family, I have a job, I'm having a handsome salary, and I'm comfortable with this. I don't want to try anything new. 
because I don't see a reason for it. This is the major mental, um, I would say, a kind of a thought process that happens in many of us once we are settled in. We feel that I, I need not move out for any challenges. OK, but there are reasons for us to move out to face new challenges. But before that, moving out of comfort zone, it is easy to speak about that we, we, we put ourselves to uh, really come out of it. There are certain truths that we have to learn if we have to we have to learn and accept, of course, if we have to go forward. And the first one is the first thing that you would feel when you are trying to put yourself out of a comfort zone is you will feel uncomfortable. You will feel uncomfortable for this reason that you have stepped one step out of that zone, out of that mental conditioning, out of that thought processes, out of that uh, attitude that you have built for yourself. And you're seeing something new in front of you, which you are not able to view these many days. So as soon as we get uncomfortable, we are uh, encouraged in the sense we ourselves are encouraged to go back and settle back in that comfort zone, in that space of mind, which we should not do. We should learn to break that uncomfortable situation or that uncomfortable feeling that is there within us and go forward. Next, this definitely does not mean that we should do something crazy. I would like to share a life experience where I was talking with a group of students a few months back about doing something new in life. OK, so they were all the students who were about to uh, uh, clear their second view and go forward. And these students were coming back to me to ask what apart from academics can they do? What apart from academics can they think of uh, to, uh, it not only as a career option, but as to uh, pursue a hobby or some kind of um, giving back to the society. They wanted to start something where they could give back to the society uh, in form of a social service. Now, when I was talking about all this with them, there was one boy who stood up and said, I have this liking to do something which is very exciting. Now, exciting is a term which is extremely subjective. For me, listening to music is very exciting. When I try something new in music, it's is, is very exciting. For a child okay, who has learned to walk, if the child can take 10 steps at a stretch, that is very exciting. So because this is a very uh, subjective topic, so I asked that boy, what is that that keeps you excited? He said, ma'am, something like you know, performing a wheelie on a bike or going on a bungee jumping, that is very exciting for me. And I would like to try it. Here, we must be very clear that whatever we decide to do out of our comfort zone, we should keep the safety of ourselves, our family, and the surrounding. Otherwise, we are not doing justice to what we are born for. It is extremely important for us to see to it that we are not doing anything crazy when I say that you have to come out of the comfort zone. You have to come out of the comfort zone to face new challenges, to get new experiences in life, but definitely not uh, on the compromise of your safety. Next, build a support system. It is extremely important as a person for me to achieve something if I have to achieve something, if I don't have a required support system, it will not be a successful journey for me. I must be able to develop that trust in my family members. I must be able to develop that trust in my uh, acquaintances, in my relationships, in my friends, so that they will stand as a support system for me when I have to go forward in achieving something. If I have decided to go against people, as such, it's an uncomfortable thing for you to come out of a comfort zone and try something new. But if you forego this support system, what you are bound to be with in a society, in a, because we are a social animal, then we will definitely find it all the more difficult. The next truth that we must keep in mind is find your own way. I just spoke about support system. 
that doesn't mean that you will give away your originality we should be extremely unique in our thought processes i should be able to take decisions for myself it is perfectly okay for me to go and ask for suggestions from various people from various background we have people in our family in our profession who are well learned and well experienced going and sitting with them and getting to know what are the pros and cons of a decision that i'm going to take is a good move building that support system that trust with between people is a good move but finally the decision should be ours we should never depend on somebody else for us to take our decisions next it will not be a easy job you will have to fight with yourself we will have to fight with ourselves to move out of our comfort zone for the simple reason that though my mind is willing to do something new i have not trained my mind yet to face the new challenges for this simple reason it will not be a easy job but only perseverance confidence and trust in myself will allow me to form a new boundary around myself now as a teacher i will be able to do all of this because of a certain kind of experience i have had but if i have to bring out this uh, thought process in a student how am i going to do it the best way to do it is practice show to your students that you are doing all that is required for you to grow as a person for you to better as a person for you to better as a teacher when you see when you make the children see when you make your students see that effort that you have been putting for your betterment that itself is a biggest motivation for your students one second talk to them it could be the students in your institution or even your own children at home talk to them talk to them about your ideas talk to them about your uh, efforts about your hardships that you are facing talk to them about the challenges that you are trying to overcome to form that new boundary around you only when we talk to them will they realize or will they learn to observe it in that way that you want them to see if that observation is not allowed in the students they will feel comfortable the way they are okay for example at home children are very comfortable when they have their mothers cooking for them giving it to them where they are sitting they they have entertainment at, at the click of their thumb now okay so if we want certain changes in our children then we have to show them that we are trying it else we are not if we are not setting an example for them it will be very very difficult for them to understand this process of coming out of a comfort zone why should one come out of a comfort zone this slide is completely dedicated to the student fraternity how as a facilitator as a trainer as a teacher as a parent how am i able, how am i going to put this idea into the mind of a 15 16 year old the first one is it makes us strong it definitely makes us strong mentally and emotionally and why does it makes us strong because we will be facing various challenges that we would not even have uh, thought of in our wildest dreams when we step out of the comfort zone about out of that boundary that we have set for ourselves when we face the challenges we start thinking of various options as to how to overcome this this thought process is what will help us to become strong both mentally and emotionally next is creative we all are born creative we all are born with a complete package of a brain the right brain and the left brain we are having a perfectly working brain which has made us to succeed in whatever we have done so far in our life but we forget to become creative we forget to bring that aspect of creativity in whatever we do now creativity does not mean only art drawing or painting or you know writing 
it means anything that we can do a little different. It could be a presentation of a meal on a table. It could be the way you talk to people. It could be the sentence formation that you form when you're trying to express something to a person. It could be anything. Creativity is there in the individual. I would compare this with a small example. Majorly, most of us are right-handed, right-hand dominant people. We do, we write, we eat in our right hand. There are a section of people who are left-handed. They are left-hand dominant people. But does this mean that a right-handed person cannot write in left hand? No. Yes, my handwriting may not be neat if I write in left hand. That is because of the lack of practice. But if I give in that kind of an interest, if I give in that kind of a time and practice, I will be able to master my handwriting even while using my left hand. As simple as that. Creativity requires that kind of a time, practice and thinking. If I'm able to put these three together, any person can become creative in whatever the person is planning to do in his or her life. Next, it increases self-confidence. Why does it increase self-confidence? Because we are facing new challenges and every time we face a challenge, every time we face a barrier and we try to overcome that barrier, it increases that sense of self-confidence in me. It makes me more confident to face the, more, the, the world with more boldness. Hence, coming out of the comfort zone will always help us in increasing our confidence. Also, it is a complete personality development. My thought process will change. My attitude towards aspects about individuals, about situations will change. My activity in a day will change. My priorities in life will change. Hence, it's a complete personality development. And any challenge that I face will have two results. One, either I will fail and come back or I will succeed in facing the challenge. Both of these things are giving me something to sit and enjoy about or ponder about. One, it will help me with giving me an experience or it will help me in giving me success. Both of this is important for me to grow up the ladder of success. Hence, the reasons for me to come out of this comfort zone is that at one point of time in my life, I will have a bag full of experiences with a completely formed personality with increased self-confidence where I can creatively explain to people that these are the things which were the milestones for me and these were the way that I was able to come, to, come out to be a successful person. How can we do it? Now this slide, we can take it for our personal understanding or also to present the same to our student community. The first one is we must, do, we must learn to adapt. Now there is a difference between adapting and adjusting. This, there is a very thin line of difference between these two. And the day we come to know about this, we will be able to fit ourselves in any situation that comes in our life. Now, adjusting is where you're compromising on one of your very strong belief to fit in a environment, whereas adapting is you're accepting it. You're not let going of your belief system, but at the same time, you will not be thinking or speaking ill about the concept that is presented or the situation that is presented or the person that is in front of who is in front of you. You will accept the situation as it is. You will accept the person as it is and try to work with that situation or a person. This is adapt. Next, ego. We are extremely egoistic because we feel that we are perfect in what we do. Now, 
for example, I am sure many of us would find it difficult to get a peace of mind from a child. Okay, if a child is standing in front of me and advising me that I should not have behaved in a particular manner, my ego is hurt. I would definitely not appreciate my husband giving me cooking tips because I feel I'm better in kitchen than him. Yes, when I keep this ego at check, because the moment I am trying to do something new, something which is completely new for me to uh, face, I will have people giving me n number of suggestions which keeps bombarding. I should be able to take each one of it in a positive stride without allowing my ego to disturb me. Only then will I be able to cross this barrier and come out and emerge as a successful person. I should have the courage. Courage to face the new. Courage to leave what leave behind what I am adjusted with, what I am what I am comfortable with, to move forward to the new space, to move forward to the new happenings of life and see to what extent I can stretch my boundaries. We must avoid stagnation. Stagnation can be anywhere. It could be in the family. It could be in my profession. It could be within myself. Stagnation is that concept where we are not seeing anything new that is happening. We are not seeing any growth at all. It could be in a family level, level as well. You are a mother and you're playing different roles of the mother. And every day your routine is set to an extent that you can, there is no change in your life at all. Your timetable is so perfect that it doesn't change. It doesn't alter even after months, even after years. This will make you completely a person uh, who has no contact with the outside world at all. So what should I do to avoid the stagnation? How am I going to overcome the stagnation? I have met with a person who dedicated her life for the family throughout till her children settled. After children settled, it was only her. She had lost her husband quite some time back. Now, how was this lady going to lead a life? Because her life for these many years was a set routine. She was catering to the needs of her children. And they are married and settled. And they have their own life to look after now. Now, this becomes difficult for her because she doesn't know anything else to adapt herself to. That is why they say old age is a curse. It is not because they. it is a curse in actuality. It is because they don't know how to uh, manage their time, how to effectively manage their time, how to effectively keep themselves busy through the day. But of course, this lady found her way. She started taking many classes. She started learning many things. She started giving classes of all the knowledge. What she, she was a Sanskrit scholar. So what she did was she started a small time uh, Sanskrit uh, classes for the children in her neighborhood. And this way, she tried to find that she was something better than what she was all these years. So avoiding stagnation becomes extremely important from a very early age. Otherwise, adapting to a new lifestyle after a set of 25 or 30 years of a life, uh, lifestyle, it becomes difficult. Next, work on competency. Competency doesn't mean that you have to work uh, keeping the competition between the people. No, you can compete yourself. We should learn to compete ourselves. How? By learning new things by seeing on what all can I master myself. It doesn't mean that we have to go and master ourselves in 10 skills or you know five skills and see to it that I'm successful in all of it, not required. But am I A, do I have plan B, C and D in my life? If my plan A for life does not work out, do I have a plan B, C and D where I can equally see to it that my life is settled as if, as if, if my plan A had worked. So if this competency, if I can work upon, my life will be much more colorful going forward. 
how do I reach or how do I come out of this comfort zone? Comfort zone is, um, is a four stage process, I would say. Once I decide to come out of the comfort zone, the very next zone will be my fear zone. Now, what is this fear zone? It is that place where I am faced with challenges. My inner strength is weak and I'm not ready to overcome these challenges mentally, emotionally, physically. I am not ready because I'm accustomed to a comfortable space in my life where things were happening on their own without my effort. So I need not worry much about it. For me to move on to the third zone, I have to overcome this fear. And how will I overcome this fear? Yes, of course, I have a support system which will clap for me and say, come on, go forward. You will be able to do it. But that's all a support system can do. It cannot hold me by hand and push me. Right? A support system will stand next to me and say, I am there for you. You go forward. That moving forward, keeping one step forward is my effort. I have to put that effort. Otherwise, I will come back to my space where I was comfortable and I will not worry about the, the growth of my personality or of myself in a larger. Once I decide to overcome this fear zone, I will reach the learning zone. This learning zone will tell me that I am capable of facing n number of challenges. I have the capacity in me both physically, mentally and emotionally for me to grow up in my ladder of success. But for me to learn this, I have to overcome this fear zone. If I do not overcome this fear zone, I will not, I will, I, will, I am actually stopping myself from learning something which is completely required for my success in life. And in this learning zone, what do I get to? see i will see a new my new self of me i will see a new person i am portraying as a completely different person to myself here because i am i am able to think critically think i am able to uh, overcome difficulties effectively i am able to see how differently i can uh, come out with solutions for the same problem so this learning zone will actually help me to grow my personality within myself. And it, 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 it will be a place or it will be a zone where I'm learning about myself. Next is our growth zone. Once I have these experiences, as I said earlier, any challenge will have two results, either a success or a failure. Success will give us that satisfaction of being successful and a failure will give us an experience and a learning and will tell us how differently I can face this problem. So once I have this kind of a experience learning in my bag, then I am in the growth zone where I can see my optimum level of my success, optimum level of my capacity towards the success of my life. When I'm talking all of this, we must keep in mind that there are people in and around us itself who have faced various innumerable kind of an, uh, challenges and we feel that we have done nothing. I want to present a couple of examples in front of you, hoping that it will have some kind of a change in your thought processes. As you're watching these videos, I would like you to revisit those five questions what I had posed in front of you, the first slide. Anurima volleyball champion. She sports women spirit and she chain वो चार से पांच लड़के थे उन्होंने अनुरिमा को चलती ट्रेन से उठाकर बाहर फेंक दिया ये तो थी एक बुरी चीज इससे भी बुरा तो तब हुआ जब अनुरिमा को नीचे फेंका गया उसी वक्त दूसरे ट्रैक से भी ट्रेन आ रही थी अनुरिमा उस ट्रेन से टकराई और जाकर नीचे गिरी 
जब दोनों ट्रेन निकल गई जब उन्हें होश आया तब उन्होंने देखा कि उनका एक पेड़ कट चुका था आधा पेड़ जींस में था और घुटनों के यहाँ से आधा पेड़ जींस में लटका हुआ था और वहीं से हड्डियां टूट टूट कर बाहर आ रही और सिर्फ यही नहीं बल्कि ट्रेन के ट्रैक पर आपने छोटे छोटे चूहे देखे होंगे वो चूहे आकर उस घाव को उस पेड़ को आकर उतर रहे थे अनुरी माँ ये सारा दृश्य अपनी आंखों से साफ साफ देख रही थी लेकिन कर कुछ नहीं पा रही क्योंकि उनकी बॉडी में जरा भी मूवमेंट नहीं हो रहा था पूरी रात उन्हें मदद मांगी लेकिन कोई नहीं आया उन्हें बचाने के लिए जब सुबह हुई और कुछ लोगों ने उन्हें देखा तो उन्हें हॉस्पिटल पहुंचाया हॉस्पिटल के बेड पर सब लोगों ने यहाँ तक कि एम्स के डॉक्टरों ने तक ये कह दिया था कि एक प्रोस्थेटिक लेग से चलना सीखने में लोगों को तीन से चार साल लग जाते हैं कुछ दिनों तक उनका हॉस्पिटल में इलाज चला और जब उनकी हॉस्पिटल से छुट्टी हुई जब वो घर गई तो घर जाने के बाद जब ऐसी सिचुएशन में लोग ये सोचते हैं कि आगे की जिंदगी का गुजारा कैसे होगा अनुरिमा के माइंड में सिर्फ दो चीजें थी एक तो ये कि मुझे इन सबको गलत साबित करना है और दूसरी ये कि अपनी सबसे बड़ी कमजोरी को अपनी सबसे बड़ी ताकत बनाकर दुनिया की सबसे ऊंची चोटी माउंट एवरेस्ट को फतेह करना है मैडम बचेंद्री पाल जिन्होंने 1984 में एवरेस्ट समिट किया था जब अनुरिमा ने उनको ये बताया कि मुझे एवरेस्ट समिट करना है तो मैडम बचेंद्री पाल की आंखों से आंसू आ गए उन्होंने कहा कि अनुरिमा तू इस हालत में भी ये सोचने की हिम्मत रखती है तूने अपने अंदर तो एवरेस्ट को फतेह कर लिया है बस अब तो दुनिया को पहाड़ी रूप से दिखाना बाकी रह गया है और जब शुरुआत हुई तो आप मानेंगे नहीं जहाँ लोगों को दो मिनट लगते थे रोड हेड से बेस कैम्प जाने के लिए वहीं अनुरिमा को तीन घंटे लगते थे और आपको यकीन नहीं होगा ये जानकर कि ठीक आठ महीने बाद बेस कैंप से सभी साथ में निकलते और टॉप पर अनुरिमा सबसे पहले पहुंचती बाकी सबके पेड़ सही सलामत थे लेकिन अनुरिमा के नहीं थे फिर भी अनुरिमा सबसे पहले पहुंचती थी ग्यारह अप्रैल दो को उन्हें चलती ट्रेन से बाहर फेंका गया था एम्स के डॉक्टरों का कहना था कि प्रोस्थेटिक लेग से चलना सीखने में लोगों को तीन से चार साल लग जाते हैं इक्कीस मई दो को वो दुनिया की सबसे ऊंची चोटी पर थी कैसे लोगों को लगता था कि अनुरिमा ने अपने इस गोल को अपने पैरों से क्लाइम किया लेकिन अनुरिमा का यह कहना है कि उन्होंने अपने इस गोल को अपने पैरों से क्लाइम किया ही नहीं उन्होंने अपने इस गोल को अपने इस मिशन को अपने पूरे दिल और दिमाग से क्लाइम किया और जब अनुरिमा रात को क्लाइम कर रही थी चूंकि रात को वेदर बहुत ही नॉर्मल होता है इसलिए रात को क्लाइंबिंग करना थोड़ा आसान होता है तो जब वो रात को क्लाइंब कर रही थी तब उनकी आंखें फटी की फटी रह गई अंधेरे में जहां पर भी उनकी हेडलाइट पड़ रही थी वहां पर सिर्फ लाशें की लाशें बिछी थी उनके अंदर से डर निकल रहा था कि जिस काम को करने के लिए वो निकली है उसी काम को करने के लिए ये लोग निकले थे और ये लोग यहाँ पर मरे हुए और इन लोगों का तो शरीर भी सही सलामत था उसके बावजूद भी ये यहाँ पर आकर मर गए उनके अंदर से डर निकल रहा था और इस डर का सामना कर थोड़ी हिम्मत दिखाकर उन्होंने अपना एक कदम आगे बढ़ाया और उसी कदम के आगे अपना एक कदम और रख दिया और धीरे धीरे ही सही लेकिन वो आगे बढ़ी हिलेरी स्टेशन एवरेस्ट से थोड़ा नीचे जब अनुरिमा वहां पहुंची तो उनका ऑक्सीजन का लेवल कम होने लगा उनके शेरपा ने उन्हें कहा कि अनुरिमा वापस चलो तुम्हारा ऑक्सीजन खत्म हो रहा है अगर जिंदा बचे तो फिर से वापस आ सकते हैं लेकिन अनुरिमा को पता था कि ये मौका उन्हें बहुत ही मुश्किल से मिला है और शायद इसके आगे उन्हें कोई मौका मिले ही ना और वो इस गोल्डन चांस को कभी भी खोना नहीं चाहते थे उन्होंने शेरपा की बात नहीं मानी और आगे बढ़ी उनका मानना था कि यहाँ तक आई हूँ यहाँ रुकने के लिए या फिर वापस जाने के लिए नहीं यहाँ तक आई हूँ और भी आगे जाने के लिए और ठीक डेढ़ घंटे बाद वो दुनिया की सबसे ऊंची चोटी पर थी और इतिहास रच दिया उस लड़की ने जिसे एम्स के डॉक्टरों ने कहा था कि तीन से चार साल लगते हैं प्रोस्थेटिक लेग से चलना सीखने में और चलना फिरना छोड़ो दो साल में उसने एवरेस्ट को फतेह भी किया और बता दिया पूरी दुनिया को कि इंसान विकलांग दिमाग से होता है शरीर से नहीं और अगर एक बार आपने किसी काम को करने की ठान ली और उस काम को करने के लिए आप अपनी जान लगाने को तैयार हो तो दुनिया की कोई भी ताकत आपको हरा नहीं सकती आज मेरी लाइफ का सबसे बड़ा सपना पूरा हुआ और आज... This video clearly tells us that though we have the support system around us, though we have created that trust in people to help us 
that when we go that when we want to go forward we have people as our support we will not be able to achieve it if we do not have intrinsic motivation now there are two types of motivation extrinsic and intrinsic extrinsic is the external support that we get from people around us if we fail to have this intrinsic motivation or the motivation from within me for myself i will never be able to cross that fear zone i was talking about in the previous slide now i have another video to show to prove that even things which are unconventional can be taken as a challenge and you can see success please watch this video and please have those five questions pondering in your mind as you watch this Money I got out of it. So what I did, uh, I got back to my early marriage days. No? What you did at the early marriage days, you tried to impress your wife. I did the same. On that occasion, I, I saw my wife something carrying like this. I'm so, what is that I asked? My wife replied, none of your business. So I, being a husband, I ran away by her. I saw a nasty rag cloth. I don't even use that cloth to clean it too well. Eh? Then I understood she is adapting that unhygienic method to manage her period days. Then immediately asked her why you are adapting that unhygienic method. She replied, I also know about that, but myself and our sisters, if they start using that, we have to cut our family milk budget. Then I saw what's the connection between using sanitary part and milk budget, it's called affordability. I tried to impress my new wife by offering a packet of sanitary pad. I went to a local shop, I tried to buy a sanitary pad packet. That fellow looks left and right and spread a newspaper, roll it into the newspaper, give it the uh, banned item, something like that. I don't know why. I am not asked for a condom. <laughs> then I took that bag. Then I, uh, I want to see that. What is inside it? The very first time at the age of 29, 30, I am touching the sand repair. First ever. I must go. How many of the guys who are touching the sand repair? <laughs> they are not going to touch that. Because not your bag. <laughs> then I thought it is a white substance made of cotton. Oh my god, that guy is just using a penny value of raw material sense. They are selling for pounds. Dollars. Why not make a low cost sand repair my new wife? That what all is started. But after making a sand repair, where can I check? It's not an index light, I'm checking the lab. <laughs> I need a woman watcher. Where I can get in there? Even in Bangalore, you won't get in India. <laughs> So only problem, the only available victim is my wife. <laughs> when I marry Sandra Bird and hand over Santi, my wife's name is Santi. Close your eyes. Whenever I'll give, not a diamond pendant or not a diamond ring, even a chocolate, I'll give you a surprise with a lot of tons of paper rolled over it. Close your eyes. Because uh, I try to make it intimacy. Because it's an arranged marriage, not a love marriage. <laughs> So the one day she said openly, I'm not going to support this, she said. Then another victims, they got into my sisters. But even sister, wife, they are not ready to support in the research. That's why I'm always jealous with the saints in India. They are having lots of women volunteers around them. Why I'm not getting? Even without the calling, all Anandas, Nandas, they will get lots of women volunteers. <laughs> Then I use, try to use that medical college girls, they are also refused. Finally, I decide to use sanitary myself. <laughs> now I am having a title like the first man set foot on the moon, Armstrong. Then Ten Singh Hillary in Everest, like that Murvanan is the first man who wore a sanitary pad across the globe. <laughs> I wore a sanitary pad, I filled animal blood in the football border, I tied up here. There is a due punishment to my panties while I'm walking, while I'm cycling, mad at first. There is a dose of the blessed go there. That makes me to vote down any woman in front of me to give full respect. That five days I never forget, the messy days, the lousy days, that wetness, uh, my God, is unbelievable. <laughs> 
But here the problem is one company is making napkin out of cotton, it is working well. But I am also trying to make napkin, but it's good cotton is not working. That makes me too out of years to continue research, research, research. You need first funds, not only financial crisis, because of the science repair research, I come through all sort of problems, including divorce notice from my wife. <laughs> why why it is means I use medical college girl, she suspect. I am using as a trump card to run behind medical college girls. Finally, I came to know it is a special cellulose derived from a pine wood. But even after that, you need a multi-million dollar plant like this to process that material. Again, I stuck up. Then I spent another four years to create my own machine tools, a simple machine tool like this. In this machine, any rural woman can apply the same raw material what they are processing in the multinational plant. Anyone can make weld glass napkin at your dining hall. That is my invention. So after that, what I did? Usually, if anyone got a patent or invention, immediately you want to make convert into this. I never did this. I profit this like this because you do this. If anyone run after money, their life will not any beauty. It is bored. Lot of people making lot of money, billions, billions of dollars accumulating. Why they are coming for finally for philanthropy? Why the need of accumulating money than doing philanthropy? Guru and decided to stop philanthropy from the day one. That's why <laughs> I am giving this mission only in rural India for rural women because in India you get surprised. Only two percent of women are using sand repair. Rest they are using rag cloth, leaf, ask, dust, everything. Except sand repairs. It's the same in 21st century. That's why I am going to decide to give this mission only for Kovarum Nagas, India. So far, 630 installation happened in 23 states in six other countries. Now, I am on seventh year. Sustaining against multinational, transnational design makes all MBA students a question mark. A school dropout from Bandhutra, how he is able to sustain it? That makes me as a, as a visiting professor and guest lecturer in all IAMs. <laughs> and play, play video one. Not a class of my wives and no, why are you using nasty cloth using methods? She replied immediately. I know about napkins, but if I start using napkins, then we have to cut our family bill budget, she replied. Why not make myself? A low cost napkin. So I decided going to sell this new machine machine only for self help group. That is my idea. <laughs> and previously you need a multi million investment for machine and all. Now any rural woman can they are performing puja. Just think, competing giants, even from Harvard, as well, is difficult. I make a rural woman to compete with multinationals. I'm sustaining on seventh year, already 600 inflation. What is my vision? Is I'm going to make India as an under person stand in a producing country in my lifetime. In this way, I'm going to provide not less than a million rural employment that I'm going to create. That's what I'm not running after this bloody money. I'm doing something serious. If you Chase a girl, the girl won't like you. Do your job simply, the girl will chase you. Like that, I never chase Magalakshmi. <laughs> Magalakshmi chasing me, I am keeping in the back pocket. <laughs> Not in front pocket. I am a back pocket man. That's all. He had school cupboards, saw a problem with the society of not in sand repair. I am becoming a solution provider. I'm very happy. I don't want to make this as a corporate entity. I want to make this as a low cost sanitary pad movement across the globe. That's why I put all the details on public domain like a open software. Now other than countries are accessing it. Okay. So I classify the people into three uneducated, little educated, surplus educated. <laughs> yeah, little educated done this. A yeah, surplus educated, what you are going to do for the society. 
Thank you very much. Bye. This video has given us many answers. One, education alone will not allow us to see success. We must take up challenges. He though very comically said, I faced many problems, including a divorce notice from my wife. But just imagine the situation where he must have been when he was trying to do something good for his family and society and lack with, with the lack of support system. Two, a very last statement of the video. He says, little educated, I'm able to give back so much to the society. Surplus educated, what are you going to do? What are you going to give back to the society? These are the lines that we have to think on to see to it that our society and our environment is a better place for us to live in. <coughs> Simple way to find out how as an individual can I come out of my personal or comfort space and face challenges and see success and see to it that I'm giving back something to the society is a very simple exercise called SWOT analysis. List down your strengths, weaknesses, your opportunities and threats. Please try to see how you can convert your weaknesses to strengths and how you can convert your threats to opportunities. If you can sit around half an hour and solve these little uh, aspects of your life, I'm sure you will be able to move from your comfort zone, cross the fear zone, reach the learning zone with abundance of knowledge, and then you will be in the growth zone, supporting every little need of your society. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am, for that very uh, lucid talk on getting out of your comfort zone and being positive about it. Thank, Thank you very much, Jack. and uh, I request you all to watch Detox, our disruptive literacy movement by Global Dream, which is an initiative by Dr. Sunita Gandhi since 2014. This is to ensure that everyone participates in helping India become totally literate. Let each one teach one so that every one of us has foundational literacy and numeracy. We have daily talks on this. And for more information on this, please contact 740-840-1000. Good morning, everybody, and goodbye. See you around. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your talk. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am.